Liberty Prime is online. All systems nominal. Weapons hot. Mission, the destruction of any and all Chinese communists. Liberty Prime is a giant badass robot backing up the Brotherhood of Steel's dealings. Prime is basically the pinnacle of American patriotism. He was programmed to eradicate all communism from the Anchorage frontline just before the Great War and was supposed to be the weapon to flip the switch in the fight against the Chinese invasion of Alaska. Sadly, he never made it out there due to the lacking of combat subroutines in his code. He appears in Fallout 3 and 4 as a spearhead to the final stages of the Brotherhood of Steel's plan in each game respectively. And he is an ass kicking machine in all appearances. But I've got an interesting question that I'm going to ask and hopefully answer. Is it real? Or more importantly, could we build our very own Liberty Prime right now using already crafted pieces of technology? I'm pretty sure with the right amount of funding, time and the best folk for the job, the human race could probably craft a Liberty Prime from scratch, exactly like he is in the game, within the next 10 years or so, but right now we have bigger priorities. However, some awesome nerdy folks all around the world have made us proud, by proving that there's still hope for humanity and building some seriously cool stuff. Before I get into that, let's take a step back and take a long hard look at the big film. Quite a sight, isn't he? Well, Mr. Prime has a total of 5 million hit points. Yup, you heard me correctly, 5 bloody million. It's going to take a lot to take him down. His armour must really be something else, but we've covered some armour already and it's not the armour that's going to be the unrealistic factor, it's the scale of him. And not only that, the functionality at said scale, it's certainly difficult. In 1979, a company known as Sunrise Anime, based in Tokyo, created a mega franchise that I'm pretty sure most of you are familiar with, the Gundam series. It has been a global success, with numerous anime, manga and merchandising spin-offs being released worldwide. Company Gundam Front introduced the world to a real-world Gundam project. It was apparently part of the national stunt to aid in gaining the bid to host the Olympics earlier this year in 2016. Obviously, this failed, but it's certainly an interesting attraction that has seen many tourists gazing up at it. After being introduced in 2009, it was shown off at numerous locations throughout Japan, with some minor alterations as the years went on. As of 2012, to this date, the giant Gundam, or RX-782 Gundam Ver GFT statue, stands at 18 meters high in front of the Diver City Tokyo Plaza Mall. That's all fine and dandy, but what can this block do? Well, that we don't exactly know, and by that, I mean, it could be a fully operational Gundam that was supposed to take the world by storm by being activated on the world stage during the Olympics. But since Tokyo never got the 2016 Olympics, all the world has witnessed is head movement, steam coming out of its vents and lots of bloody lights. I really doubt they would have left it this long to show the world their mega advancements, but if anybody's going to build a real world Gundam, it's probably going to be Japan. So we've got the scale to a T, as it stands at a pretty similar height to our buddy Liberty Prime. However, with our ignorance to its full potential, it's not looking like it'll be our real world robot. But I'm sure most of you would either find it really goddamn cool or just darn terrifying if you woke up to find out that Japan had actually developed a fully functional Gundam. Maybe they'll up their game the next time they bid for a global event. Knowing that the majority of our audience is American, you'll probably be a little annoyed that I've been discussing something that is Japanese and not from America, fuck yeah. Let's take a little look at something that is almost as patriotic as Liberty Prime and a little more battle ready than the Gundam statue. Team USA of Megabots have developed a massive robot that they call the MK2. Considering it was designed as a giant version of something you would see out of the Robot Wars television show, I think this is going to be a close best for our Liberty Prime right now. Team USA have recently been testing it out for weaknesses, because in its current state it is a manned robot, meaning somebody will be inside of it controlling how it fares in the fight. The main reason for this is because they've challenged a Japanese company for a battle with their robot. Yup, Japan did it first. However, I'm not going to deviate, but just remember the name Kuratas in the future. Back on track. 
The MK2 moves on treads, which solves one of the biggest problems I saw with most other robots that I found, which mainly use regular wheels. And they probably wouldn't be able to move very easily on tough terrain or just really uneven surfaces. But the MK2 has endured some testing that proves it has very good balance, taking many Gs of energy within hits from a small wrecking ball with nothing but aesthetic damage. Well, the driver would probably be pronounced dead as well, but that can be worked around with somewhat remote controls, or when we get it, a self-aware AI. Uh, it's starting to get a bit scary now. The MK2 is also at a similar height, but maybe a little smaller to what we see Liberty Prime at in the game. So overall, if the gun arm was turned into a semi-fast moving arm with a hand on the end able to grab Liberty Prime's nukes, I'm fairly confident the MK2 could work in a similar manner to Prime after some minor upgrading. So far, we've had three robots that, in their own right, are pretty cool. However, none can easily produce quite the same result that Liberty Prime can when he throws long and demolishes his foes with nuclear fire. I'm talking about his throwing arm, that he uses to hurl nuclear projectiles at any threat. For this, we can't just have a silly slow robotic arm, like we've seen already. For this, we need to have something fast. Like, really fast. In come the Federal Institute of Technology in Lausanne, Switzerland. They have developed a robotic arm that will be used as a safety measure in the future. Its main aim is to have fast reflexes and to halt as many fatalities as possible. For example, it could push a human out of the way of a collision, saving their life and probably destroying its own existence. But you'd rather a robot die in your place, right? It's a little far-fetched and still a work in progress, but it could be the future of safety. The arm has 3-6 to six times faster reflexes than the average human, depending on the circumstances, and has been trained up on catching items being thrown at it in its general direction. So, it can move pretty fast, meaning it can throw things fairly fast. In its current state, it most likely wouldn't be able to hold and nuke the size that Prime throws. However, this is early days yet. The technology is still there. All we need is some upscaling and we can use this pacifist, life-saving robot for some real good. Killing Reds, hell yeah! So, this big fella is packing some pretty powerful paintball guns on him that are the equivalent of maybe a minigun. They can be lethal in the right range, but Liberty Prime doesn't have these sorts of weapons, does he? He's got his limbs for stomping and bitch slapping people with, but his main source of firepower comes from his eye. Yep, Liberty Prime shoots freaking lasers out of his eyeballs. Well, actually it's not lasers at all. It's apparently the same as firing a Tesla can in the Vault Universe. But as Austin has proved on many occasions, the weaponry, especially the more sci-fi weaponry, make no fucking sense. The best thing we can do right now, unless some military agency has some cool robot visor under wraps, is this X-Men Cyclops styled pair of laser goggles. They're not on the market, for obvious reasons, lasers are very dangerous that close to the eye, but still, they're darn cool. Creator Anselmo Fan Zero has a large variety of cool inventions he has amassed or created himself just out of his love for geek culture. He has based these laser goggles on Cyclops from the X-Men series to a certain degree, and guess what? They work. Moderately, at least. He could only go so far with the power of the laser, considering they would be used whilst wearing them as glasses. He has taken as many precautions as he could when crafting them to make sure he wouldn't damage his own eyes when he was using them. Maybe somebody with a lot more funding could produce a laser beam to the extent of Cyclops, or even a Tesla bass from Liberty Prime, but I'm still doubtful it'll be in the next couple of years. Anyway, it won't instantly turn a raider into a pile of mush or goo, but it can burn very slowly into things, and probably cause a fire to erupt if not used with caution. One prominent thing the creator showcased was the fact that the laser can pop balloons, so imagine wearing these goggles, and all you have to do is turn the laser on and look at a balloon for a few seconds and it would pop. Assuming it wouldn't permanently damage any tissue, you could probably pull a really dark prank and burn through one of your friend's shirts. Probably safe to just stick with whippy cushions to be honest. Don't want to risk your own friend's lives. Yeah. So with a combination of things, we sort of have a real world Liberty Prime, just are very underpowered and, well, a Liberty Prime that needs a lot of upgrades, to say the least. But we're getting there. As for the nukes, well, we we all know that 
nuclear bombs are real and they have been in small sizes. I mean, the mini nuke was inspired by a real world thing, the Davy Crockett, which is just a small nuke on a recoilless gun. So that's pretty real. As for holding this fella up, we do always have the option of using the treads that the Megabot, built by Team USA, offer. Although, some people pointed out a glaring flaw in using treads in the comment section of the Bastion tech video. We open up one massive weakness, stairs. Sure, treads allow for better traction on multiple different terrain, however, we may have some form of stairs to climb and also, Liberty Prime himself had legs, probably for this exact purpose. Hajime Sakato has developed a project to actually build a functional Gunzam. Not just a model, not just a giant statue with a functional head, an actual, fully functional Gundam. He's actually publicly stated his disapproval of the giant Gundam statue. Anyway, his vision is to create a 13 foot or 3.9 meter functional robot, and that isn't even its final form. After that, Sakamoto is going to polish it up and expand to a 59 foot or 17.9 meter sized robot. It is going to take a long ass time for him to develop and perfect, but I take my hat off to him for taking on the challenge. So far, sketches of the first prototype have been drawn up alongside one of the later stages for the 13 foot robot. What about the physical gear though? Well, he has developed heavy duty legs that are built to support a heavy load that he expects to come from the torso and arms. On their own, they can be manually driven and have somebody ride atop them, but imagine when the final form is completed. Pretty awesome stuff. It's essentially if Liberty Prime bargained his weaponry away for a large sum of cheeseburgers. Yep, he's gained some weight. So we've got the legs, the arms, the torso and the weaponry sorted out. What about the brain behind this behemoth? We could always have him remotely controlled, assuming that we can circuit all this gear together without fail, but this would require some fella back at home base controlling him, when we would want to have all of our attacking forces available when we are storming the institute. I know it's scary territory, but we're going to have to venture into artificial intelligence. Spooky stuff. And we're not talking fully self-aware AI, because that's still not completely plausible or, you know, completely real yet. I'm talking about the sort of AI that has certain programs that it sticks to and does exactly like it should. Kinda like if you trained a dog that had bloody massive weapons at its disposal really well. There is a beta stage AI that is still being worked upon a lot that can input commands from voice recognition software. Though basic, it is still a giant leap. It can even be used alongside a vocal emitter to produce basic conversation, answering questions it picks up in a rudimentary way. So not only can we get Prime to demolish our enemies, we can get him to spurt out anti-communism propaganda, and even have him sparking up basic conversations with the lads out in the front line. Not that it would benefit us much when we're just needing him to throw a few nukes their way. So that was my video on some tech behind Liberty Prime in a real world. Yet again, we're still behind the in-game video game features, but not anywhere near as much as we think. Give it a decade and we'll all have big Liberty Prime servants to do our bidding. I really hope you all enjoyed this episode and if you did, make sure to drop a like, drop a comment and subscribe if you've not done so already. If you have any questions, you can shoot them over to at shoddycast or if you want to have a chat with me on Twitter, Go to at Stally's Militia, it'd be appreciated if you give us a follow. Also, Alex, the brains behind the Psycho series, is going to be doing a charity stream for Extra Life, and we need your help. Get your ass over to the Asynchrocast page on Extra Life and send over some love to your local children's hospital. Link is on the screen right now or in the description. Also, there is a ton of sweet goodies to be won as well, so go. Go now. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. My name is Andrew or Stally111, and I'll see you guys on the next episode. Bye bye!